pit and ass. Good morning. Welcome home. We're glad you're all here this morning. Would you stand with us as we start our time off with some worship and song? One, two, three. the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. I try with all my mind, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, a bag of bones. Just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me that I was not alone. Cause you picked me up, you turned me around, and placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because you healed my heart. Change my name forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the master. I thank the savior. I thank God. I cannot deny what I'm seeing. Got no choice but to believe. My doubts are burning. Like ashes in the wind. So, so long to my old friends. Burden and bitterness. You can just keep them moving. Nah, you ain't welcome here. From now till I walk the streets cool. I'll sing about you. Another one, I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, come on, sing it out. Hell lost another one. Hell lost another one, I am free. I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one, I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one, I am free. I am free. Because you picked me up, you turned me around And placed my feet on a solid ground I thank the Master, I thank the Savior Because you healed my heart, you changed my name Forever free, I'm not the same I thank the Master, I thank the Savior I thank God See 
sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good you are good to me Father, we're grateful for your presence this morning. And we declare, God, that you are good. Despite our circumstances, despite our past, despite what we've done, or maybe what we've left undone. God, you are good no matter what. And so I pray for the person who's coming here 
wanting, searching, hoping for hope. God, give it to them this morning. May your word be a light to their feet, a lamp for their path. Lord, we believe that, that, that you are good. You're good enough for us. You're everything we need. And so as the word is proclaimed today, I pray, God, open up our hearts to whatever it is that you have to say to us. Man, shut our eyes to what you don't want us to see and open them to what you do. Lock our ears to what we don't need to hear and open them to your voice. God, we love you and we give you praise this morning. We ask that you'd be with us now. Everybody said amen. 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 Good morning. That's not going to work today. Good morning. There we go. Good morning. Welcome home. We're glad you're here today. We're glad you're watching online this morning. And God is good. Amen. He is so good, and we're glad you're here today. We're in a series. We're starting a brand new series today um, on the Lord's Prayer. We're going to be uh, unpacking that and tackling that over the next few weeks. But this last Monday, we began uh, something called Pray 21 for those who are new today. And each morning for three weeks, Monday through Friday, um, we, we pray over these prayer cards. We're actually going to have a chance to pray over those later. We erased our prodigal boards and, and asked you to write... Uh, the names on there who hadn't come to Christ, or maybe you had a new name, we begin to pray over those. And some of you had prayer requests, and I just want to just share with you that God is answering prayer. And is Rick Young, where's Rick at? I don't normally do this, but Rick's, we've been praying for Rick's son, and he has turned a corner. So let's give God praise for that. That's awesome. And so we just celebrate that, and just it's beautiful to see that. God answers prayer. In fact, that's what we're talking about today, that prayer is essential to a strong, healthy, and vibrant relationship with Jesus. Let's say that together. Prayer is essential to a strong, healthy, and vibrant relationship with Jesus. It's hard to have a good marriage, a good relationship with your child, a good relationship with your spouse, a good relationship with your coworker without healthy communication. In our relationship with Jesus, there's no more important relationship than our relationship with Christ, and it is important for us to have good communication with him. And a part of communication is talking, but there's also another part to it called listening. And when we pray, things, uh, God moves. And so prayer is essential to a strong, healthy, and vibrant relationship with Jesus. Paul, when he's talking uh, in his first letter to Thessalonica, he says, always be joyful. Let's read those yellow words. Never stop praying. Then he says, be thankful. In what kind of circumstances? All circumstances. And let me just say, between those that are watching online and all of you that are sitting in here today, just about every circumstance is represented. Some of you are, that are online or you're here this morning, things are in a good spot right now. Maybe they're not always good, but you would say, man, right now things are good. And then others of you would say, ah, things could be better. And then some of you would say, man, let me just tell you, it's not great. And the one thing that we all have in common, and the truth is probably all of us can recognize all three of those different kinds of situations, whether it's going great, it's ho-hum, or it's bad, God is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised, and we can be joyful, and we can be thankful in all circumstances, because this is God's will for you who belong to Jesus Christ. God's not calling us just to praise him and be joyful when things are going well. He calls us to praise him and be joyful no matter if they're going well. Amen? And so we celebrate that today. Pastor Garrett and I were talking this week, and he said something. I said, man, I'm going to quote you. And he said, well, a lot of other people have said it besides me. I said, well, but you jog my memory with it, so I'm just going to mention it. Here's what he said. Prayer works. Amen? Let's say that. Prayer works. It's deep. Write that down. You might not remember that, okay? Prayer works. Garrett's a very profound guy. And when I say that, when we think of prayer works, that doesn't mean that if you that God is a genie in the bottle, you know, where whatever we ask, he's just going to give it to us. That's not how, sometimes we pray for things. We had a lady in our church that we prayed for cancer to be healed, and it didn't happen. There was another guy who had a similar situation, and God healed him. We don't know why sometimes these things happen. So when I say prayer works, that doesn't mean that he's just out there handing out it like it's candy. But what it does mean 
is that when we talk to God, he listens. And his presence is with us. And he hears us in our grief. Amen? Listen to this. Oswald Chambers says, Prayer does not fit us for the greater work. Let's read those yellow words. Prayer is the greater work. I say it all the time, but I know I'm not the only one. I'm not doing what I'm doing now if it wasn't for some other people in my life holding me up in prayer. All of us could say the same thing. Prayer is the greater work. If you're a believer today or you're trying to figure out if you want to do this or not, or if you want to follow Jesus, can I tell you that the moral compass of a believer is God's word? And God's word tells us to pray. In fact, Jesus taught a lot about prayer. We're going to be looking at the Lord's Prayer. And some of you have heard, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And you just kind of know that. But you may not know where it came from. Or maybe you've never heard it before. But Jesus has given one of his famous sermons called the Sermon on the Mount. And during that sermon, he covers a lot of ground. And so I can't tell you all the ground he covers, but I found a paragraph that kind of gives you an overview. He talks about money. He talks about revenge. He talks about relationships. He talks about all these different kinds of things. But really, it's summed up in this. The sermon that he's given is how to live a life that is dedicated and pleasing to God. We want to please God. That's our whole goal of life is to worship him, to glorify him. We were created for his purposes. It talks about being free from hypocrisy. It contains things about full of being his love and grace and, and wisdom and discernment. It goes on and on. And wedged in there in the middle of this big, long Sermon on the Mount where he kind of lays it out. It's like, you know, my wife and I, when we decided we were going to get married, there's these talks that we have, you know, with people. When, when someone close to you is passing away, if you're able to be there with them in that moment, you don't talk about the unimportant things. You have this important talk. And Jesus is trying to lay the foundation. He has this important talk with them on the Sermon on the Mount. And in that is he teaches about prayer. And that's what we're going to be studying over the next few weeks. He says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the street corner to be seen by others. Have you ever been somewhere and somebody prays for dinner and it's this real formal, impressive prayer? Oh, God, where art thou? And all this stuff. And you're like, OK, just talk to God. Right. In other words, what Jesus is saying is when you pray, don't don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in, in the synagogues and on the street corner. Let's read it to be seen by others. When we talk to God, we're talking to him. Um, obviously, as a pastor, I've done weddings. And when we're doing like the wedding rehearsal, and we'll be saying, you know, for better, for worse, for richer, for, and they'll be looking at me. And I'm like, hey, you guys are making this commitment to each other. These are powerful words. Look at, e look at each other, right? This isn't, this isn't about me. This is about you guys. And can I tell you this morning that when we're praying, we're not praying to impress someone else. We're praying to talk to God. He says, truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room and close the door. And let's read it. And pray to your father who is unseen. And then your father who sees you what is done in secret will reward you. And then he says, and when you pray, do not keep babbling like pagans. For they think that they will be heard because of their many words. He says, don't be like them. For your father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Let's read it. Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Jesus lays this template out of what it looks like to pray and how to pray. In fact, when you're reading about it, it's a kind of, it's a disciple, disciple's prayer. It's those who want to earnestly follow Jesus and seek him. He says, this is how you should pray. And there's a lot of ground that's talked about. Starting with identifying who God is and, and, and identifying how he meets our needs and talking about temptation and forgiveness and all these things. So we're going to tackle that. But today we want to start with the very first line in that scripture. Let's read it. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Hallowed is a fancy word for holy. So basically, God in this template, when he's talking how we should pray, he's reminding us that, hey, things start with recognizing that God is God and we are not. Amen? Have you ever been working somewhere or talking with someone and you know something's above your pay grade or you don't want to mess with it? And so they'll come to you and they'll say, hey, I need to talk to you about this. And you look at them and you say, I'm not the one to talk to. Right? Go talk to them. And part of you is doing that because you don't want to deal with that but also because you know it's not your responsibility. It's a recognition up front that we are not the boss. We are not in charge. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. God's name is holy. In Mark's gospel, Jesus calls God Father only six times. And and it says that never outside of the circle of his disciples. To Jesus, the word Father was so sacred that he could hardly bear to use it. And he could never use it except amongst those who had grasped something of what it meant. We must never use the word Father in regard to God cheaply, easily, or sentimentally. God is not an easygoing parent who tolerantly shuts his eyes to all sins and faults and mistakes. Barclay says, then God whom we call Father is the God whom we must still approach with what? Reverence and and adoration. That's good. In awe and wonder, God is our Father in heaven, and in God, there is love. Well, God is love. Yes, God is love, but he's also a God of holiness. Love and holiness combined. God's name is holy. Amen? Amen. Say that with me. God's name is holy. Listen to this. Jesus says, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. God's name deserves total reverence. Remember the third commandment? You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. I got to thinking about what does it mean to misuse God's name? Traditionally, when we think of misusing God's name, we have a very specific Uh, thing that we think of, and it's included in this, but actually, as I got to study in this a little bit, there was four major reasons how you could misuse God's name in the way that Jesus is talking about. The one was through hypocrisy. We'd misuse his name when you'd make a profession of God's name, but you weren't living up to that profession, right? Another way is by covenant breaking, making promises to God, and then what, church? Breaking them, right? That's a way that we could misuse God's name. And probably this number three is what we traditionally think of when we think of misusing God's name. And and it was where we would, by rash swearing, by mentioning God's name as a byword to no purpose at all or no good, good purpose at all, basically. In other words, the only time that we mention God's name is with respect and awe and wonder and reverence. Um... I don't know how you feel, but it's a pet peeve of mine when we, when we say, oh my, you know, and, and all those kinds of things. And the reason why is because it's disrespecting God. His name is above every name. Amen? And in the same way that we don't have to be afraid to approach God, we don't have to tremble to talk to God, but we do have to respect and honor who he is. So one of the ways was by swearing. And then the last one, uh, or or, excuse me, one of the ways was by rash swearing. And then the other one was false swearing. This is where one part of the religious regard the Jews were taught to pay to their God was to take oaths in his name. But they insulted him instead of doing him honor. And if they called him to be witness to a lie. Augustine said this, Christ is not valued at, at all unless he is above all. Let's read that. Christ is not valued at all unless he is above all. So I just want to tell you something today. Most of us probably already know this, but maybe a few of us don't. We all need to be reminded of it. God doesn't want to just be on our list of priorities. He wants to be at the very top of the list, above spouses, above our kids, above our worries, above our ambitions, above our fears. God is worthy to be praised, and he is to be at the top of the list. One of the things that we can recognize, besides the fact that God is holy, and his name is to be holy, 
is that God's name brings authority and power. Amen? Let's say that. God's name brings authority and power. I shared with you just a little bit ago, we've been praying for Ricky, and we've started to see some changes there. There's been some other um, just answers to prayer. We've been praying for Steve Smith, and we're starting to see a change there. I shared in the first service, there was a baby a few years ago who, who had a misshaped head. And the church started praying for this baby, and we anointed the baby, and God healed, healed her. Um, there's been other stories where people have been addicted to something, and, and we prayed, and, and chains were set free. There's names that were on this prodigal board that, that were erased because they were set free. God answers prayer, and prayer is powerful and effective. And, and we don't always realize that we have God's authority and power in us as we live in his spirit. Um, when I was growing up, we went to this, uh, until about 10 years old, we went to this little country church in Monmouth, Kansas. Now, if you're from here, from out of town, you have no idea where that is. But if you've been around here locally, has anybody even heard of Monmouth, Kansas? It's a Mark's like, I know. Yeah, it's like a dot in the road. It's just this little bitty out in the middle of nowhere. And there's this little bitty country church there. And my grandma, she's 94 years old. And she says to this very day, honey, I'm going to come watch you preach. But, you know, I got to play over there. I said, I know. So she prays every Sunday. She's 94. And they used to have vacation Bible school, and they, we, we, there would be this song that we would sing, and it would be, I won't sing it, because, but silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. They went walking and leaping and praising God. Anybody ever heard that song before? Okay, this is awkward. I'm the only one. Okay. <laughs> I never knew what it meant. They'd kind of tell me, but they were giving me snacks afterwards, so I didn't pay attention. It's bad. If you offer me snacks, I kind of zone out. But here's the story. In Acts chapter 3, Peter and John are going to 3 o'clock prayer at the temple. They prayed a lot. It'd be good if we did. And they're going to the temple to pray, and there's this beggar. He was doing his normal routine. He would place himself beside where they, people are walking and going so that he could get money, so that he could survive. Okay, and, and Peter and John, they're on their way to the temple, and they're doing their normal thing. They're going to pray, and they have this encounter with this guy. And you know how sometimes people don't realize how their life's getting ready to change? Like sometimes people, they tune in online, or they come on Wednesday, youth group or children's, or, or you show up on a Sunday, and you have no idea. You're just checking it out that God is getting ready to change your life, that you'll never be the same. That something, somehow something's different. When I was 10 years old, we walked into the church, into this church, and our lives were never the same. And can I tell you that that's what happened to this beggar. He's on the side of the road, and he's begging for food, and he encounters Peter. And let me tell you, Peter has been through it. Peter's seen what Jesus has done. Peter's experienced Jesus' grace when he failed him, and he was reinstated in John 21. Peter has preached his heart out to see people come to know Christ, and this beggar doesn't even know what's getting ready to hit him. And he comes up to Peter, and he asks for money, and here's what Peter says. He says, listen, I'm not going to give you any silver or gold, but I'll tell you what I will give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. Now remember, it's been a minute ago because I've been rambling for a little while. <laughs> number two, number, number, the number two point was God's name brings authority and power. Amen? God's name brings authority and power. And Peter, he doesn't pray in his own name. He doesn't pray just saying, hey, I've had these experiences so I can give you. Know. No, he says, in the name of who? Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. And then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. Let's read it. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. Now, if there was a microphone, Peter would have looked at the guy and went, boom. I just prayed in the authority and the power of Jesus Christ for you. He jumped up, stood on his feet. They went walking and leaping. All right. They jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. 
Let's read it. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. God is good. God's name brings authority and power. If you don't think it does, go into any public school and just say the name Jesus and see what happens. You're going to get a reaction one way or the other. Right? I mean, you can go into the school and say, Rumpelstiltskin, Peaches, whatever you want to say. You say the name of Jesus, you're going to get some type of reaction. You're going to get an amen. You're going to get a jeer. You're going to get reported. Who knows? But you're going to get a reaction. Same thing if you went into any place because God's name has authority and power. And the other thing that we see as we unpack God's word and you read a little bit about it and you see where Jesus uh, or Paul's talking to Philippi, you realize that our response to God's name should always be worship. Our response to God's name should always be worship, right? I just mentioned it. Paul, he's, he's writing to Philippi, and he says a bunch of really good stuff. Here's some of it. He says, though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he had these divine privileges. And it says he gave up his divine privileges. And he, he took the humble position of a slave. And he was born as a human being. And when he appeared in human form, he could have been prideful and said, you don't know who I am. No, that's not what he did. It says he humbled himself in obedience to God. You remember in the Garden of Gethsemane? Where God's already laid out this plan. Jesus has already fasted 40 days a night, done all these miracles, done all these kinds of things, taught people how to pray and, and healed people and all this kind of stuff. And it's all coming down to the end. And Jesus is like, I'll drink this cup if you want me to, because your will be done. But I am definitely okay with going a different direction. But not my will, your will. He humbled himself in obedience to who? To who? He humbled himself not in obedience because he thought it was the right thing to do. Not in obedience because he's really self-controlled. Not in obedience because it was his plan. No, in obedience to God. And he died a criminal's death on a cross. The type of death that we all deserve. There is not a person in here that was born innocent. We are all guilty of breaking the law of God. We are one peasant telling another peasant where to get the food. Jesus died a criminal's death. Paul says, therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above what? Come on, church. Above what? All other names, we don't say, oh, my God, oh, man, oh, this. We don't say that. It's the name above all names. It's above all names, church. The name above all names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Remember our point? Our response to God's name should always be worship. See, because at, every, every, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. In heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Okay, that's a lot of space. Check that out, for real, for just a minute. Because we're, we're moving on. But look, look. In heaven, on earth, and under the earth. That's a lot of real estate. Every knee should bow. And every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. God's name brings worship. Our response to his name should always be worship. Now, I'm just being honest, and because I know you're the same way. I don't just pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's not the only prayer that I pray, and neither do you. But what this template gives us is this. It, it's a recognizing that our prayer begins with acknowledging who God is. And that we are not God. See, 
if we start playing God, we start thinking that fish and bread doesn't feed everybody, and so they all need to go to Chili's or somewhere to get some food. If we're doing the math, we realize this lady's been caught in adultery, and she's guilty, and the law says to kill her. If we're God, Peter denied Jesus three times, traitor, disloyal, forget you. But we aren't God. God goes beyond anything that we can fathom or understand. He is holy. He is loving. He is compassionate. He is just. The Lord's Prayer begins with acknowledging that God is God and we are not. What area of your life, employment, family, marriage, finance, uncertainty, health, what area of your life do we all need to be reminded? In fact, I would just say this. Every one of us have an area in our life that we have to be reminded we are not in control. And we have to put our faith and trust in him. Years ago, there was a guy that uh, came to our church. His name was Larry Thornburg, and he was our worship leader. And he would always ask me as a teenager how my prayer life was. He'd say, how's your prayer life? Sometimes Larry would be in the hallway And I'd try to avoid him because I didn't want to answer his question. Oh, there's Larry. Oh, boy. (laughs) It's not been good this week. So I want to ask you this as our band comes up today. We think about this Lord's Prayer. How is your prayer life? Like if you forget praying for your food and uttering a prayer maybe before you go to bed, how is your prayer life? Are you talking with God? Are you giving God's name, power, and reverence? This seems like a small point, but really it's not. Are we using God's name in a way that it was never designed to be used? Now, if you're not a follower of Jesus, you can use God's name however you want because that's your choice and you don't believe that God's word is true, so you're like, whatever. But if you're a follower of Jesus, are you using his words with respect and reverence? Are you using his name in an unrespectful way? And then for all of us, do we remember that there is power and authority available for the followers of Christ in the name of Jesus? We have these prodigal boards on either side of the sanctuary. There's names on those. I think we filmed the first service so I can get off the stage. So I don't think we're filming this one. Like, check this out. I don't know, Jeffrey, Krista, Heather, Jeff, Billy, Adam. These are all people. Do we understand that when we go and we pray for them, that something can happen there? Look at all these prayer cards lined up all over these, these altars. People with needs. Over here, another prodigal board. Jenna, Mark, Chris, Aaron, Louis, on and on and on. Church, we have the opportunity to bring people before Jesus and lift them up. I'll tell you this, I'm not doing this if I didn't have people in my life lifting up me. And you would say the same if you have a relationship with Jesus, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, someone was praying for you or you wouldn't be where you're at. And you know people that you work with and go to school with and maybe in your own home who don't know Jesus. And the enemy's not going to get you who knows Jesus to just turn your back on him most likely. But what he can do is lull you to sleep with thinking it really doesn't work. You know, if you just it's not really going to change anything. Now I realize sometimes God doesn't answer prayer that we the way we want, but we pray in faith believing God can make a difference. So we're going to have our altars open. And I want to encourage you, if you're someone who normally would not come forward, would you come forward for somebody else and come get a card? 
take it back to wherever you're at and pray for that person. And then when you're done, bring that card, put it back on the altar, and get another one. We're doing two songs, right, G? Two songs. You can come and pray. There's names on these boards. In fact, maybe you have a prayer card that you'd like to write a prayer request on. You can add it to our stack. Maybe you've got a name that needs to go on those boards. You can do that. And then we're going to also have a time of anointing. Maybe this morning you'd like to be anointed. In James chapter 5, it talks about um, that we're to pray for those that are sick. Maybe you'd like to be anointed today. We make the sign of the cross on your forehead. We're just going to make the sign and we'll just pray in Jesus' name because there's power in Jesus' name. Maybe you'd like to be anointed on behalf of someone else. Maybe somebody's not here that's sick in the hospital. Be great for somebody to come and be anointed for Steve Smith. Steve's been back and forth. You can come and say, hey, I'd like to be, I'd be anointed on behalf of this person. We'll pray. It's called intercessory prayer. Maybe you just want to come and talk to God. Can I just tell you this? If you want to come and pray, come and pray. There's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's stand together this morning. speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression. I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name. streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus.
shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. What's your name, Spell? Cause your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. This is how I fight my battle. 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 They look. It may look like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how, this is how, this is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how, this is how. Like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how, this is how, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how, this is how. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by it. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. God, we're so grateful for your presence in this place today. We're so thankful that by your grace, we can 
we can come into your presence forgiven, healed, set free, trusting you. And we do acknowledge together as a church family that you are God. We're not. You are the God of all creation. Maker of heaven and earth. And we give you our praise and our worship today. Father, we thank you for the some of the prayer requests that that have been answered already. (coughs) And we continue to lift up these, the needs that are on these prayer cards. Lord, you know every one of them. You know them better than we do. (coughs) You know the answer to everyone better than we do. So we continue to pray over them in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for the names that are on our prodigal boards. Your word tells us that your your will, your desire is that none of them would be lost. (coughs) We believe salvation is offered to anyone who will receive it in faith and repentance. And so, Father, would you continue to work in every one of these people's lives? May your spirit continue to draw them. Open their eyes to the truth of who you are. The truth of their need for you and the truth of your love for them. So Father, we love you. We give you thanks in advance for the way you're going to work, for the way we believe you're going to work in all of these requests, in all of these people's lives. So now, Father, I pray that you would fill your people with your peace. Those who are carrying burdens today, Lord, we know you've heard the cries of our hearts. And we know you care. And I pray that until the answers come, Lord, would you fill us with your peace. We love you and we trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Somebody, maybe one of you was kind enough to share this crud that's going around with me, and I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. (laughs) But uh, it is good to see you today. Thank you for worshiping with us. If you're new, maybe you're visiting today for the first time, and maybe you've been here a few Sundays and you haven't done this yet, if you would just take a uh, Connect card from the seat pocket in front of you, just takes a second, fill that out. There are some gray offering boxes on the door. You can drop it in there on your way out. There's one in the lobby as well. You could also... Go to our church website or download the Church Center app and you can fill one out there and we would greatly appreciate it. If you brought an offering with you today, thank you for that. You can drop that in one of the offering boxes as well. And if it would be more convenient, you can give uh, through the website, through the Church Center app. Um, and, and thank you, as always, for those donations and for, those, uh, for your giving. Uh, related to that, if you need a giving receipt to, to file your taxes Uh, Go on the Church Center app, go on the website, there's a form you can fill out, we'll either email it to you, we'll mail it, we'll hold it at the office. If you need help with the technology, call the office, we'll help you with that. Um, But the main thing you need to know is we're not just mailing, just mailing all of them out. So if you need that, um, just fill that form out and we'll get that to you. And then next Sunday, finally, we've been talking about this forever because we had to postpone it, and finally next Sunday we're having the chili cook-off. And you've heard me talk about Kara Ward. She's in first service. She's been talking trash. I understand we have like 13, 17 chilies that people are, 17 people are donating chili. That's awesome. And uh, you're going to have a chance to vote for mine. I mean, to vote for the one that you think is the best. And so that's next Sunday. It'll be after both services. It's uh, $10 to, for chili, cinnamon roll, and the chance to vote. It's $5 for kids and uh, you'll be the judge. But we're also going to have a silent auction, and I want to share with you some of the things that are going to be at the silent auction. These are just a few. (coughs) Excuse me. Uh, A painting class for up to 10 people, 
uh, some kind of fishing sporting package. Uh, there'll be some mystery baskets. Uh, there'll be uh, some, all kinds of food items that you can bid on. And by the way, just to clarify, um, the point of a silent auction is not to guess the right price. All right? That's not it. Uh, some of you have seen a TV show and you know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> but here's the, here's the big thing. Here's the big thing. This is gonna, you can bid on this, okay? Chiefs, preseason tickets. I way, way, Alan. <laughs> preseason tickets, three rows behind the bench. I am serious, Kyle. With parking passes, it's a $400 value. Yes, yes. I mean, now, if that ends up being a preseason game with the Cowboys, that value is going to go up. But anyway, anyway, um, I digress. So anyway, all kinds, of, and there'll be all kinds of other things uh, that, you can, that you can bid on for that. So that's next Sunday. Put it on your calendar. Uh, you won't want to miss that. And all the proceeds will go to benefit our teens who are going to Nazarene Youth Conference next summer. So a couple other things we have coming up. We have a, a, another gathering, another worship night. It's coming up in a few weeks, February 19th at 630. It'll be a Sunday evening worship service. And then, as Kyle mentioned, we have Pray 21. We're entering our second week, 6 a.m. Uh, we meet here. We have a little bit of worship. We spent some time praying together. We're done by 6.45, so you can get to work. Um, if that's too early to get up, get dressed, and come here, you can join us online. You can even pull it up later in the week if you just can't, you just can't make 6 o'clock at all. But lots of options there. Um, come and be a part of it. Um, and it's, uh, it's just been a, a great first week um, that we just wrapped up. So, uh, there's lots going on. Make sure you like our Pitnass Facebook page. Download that Shirt Center app that we talk about all the time, and uh, that'll help you keep up with what's going on. So, would you stand with us? Excuse me. Let's say the blessing together. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Have a blessed, wonderful day. 